I don't know, an hour and a half to two hours probably, which is not so bad for us considering we barely ever do this, other than with these Black Thumb Dice Towers. It's another type of uh, thing I've put together that's very similar to how this is put together as well. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Type 7 by Marcus Geiger, and it is by 3D Art Labs. In the game Type 7, you're actually going to be basically making your own U-boat or submarine, and you're going to be going on a campaign. And the campaigns will last during certain periods of history. You'll be using this little guy here that you actually build yourself, and you'll be positioning it with certain types of torpedoes and other types of artillery in an attempt to go through enemy infested waters. And as you go throughout the campaign, you're going to be getting certain types of overlay or overworld maps in which you'll start on one end and move across to the other in attempts to find enemies and defeat those enemies. Sometimes you'll run into ghosts, which are basically nothing. It's just a blip on the radar or maybe even a whale. Or you may end up finding an enemy cargo ship or an enemy destroyer, in which case some of those will try and run from you and others are going to try and attack you. And it is your mission to sink them to the bottom of the depths. And if you can do so, you're going to gain victory points. And with those victory points, you can upgrade crew members. And when you do that, you're going to gain unique abilities as you go throughout the game. A Lutender engineer or a navigations officer and some of these I can't even say because they're in German but nevertheless they're gonna give you some unique abilities your ship will have a certain amount of fuel which will go through and you'll be spending as you move across the ocean and you'll be trying to basically regain that fuel as well as certain types of artillery is going to be wasted as you use it you'll be loading and unloading missiles and you'll be checking the sonar and checking to see what you're fighting against and hopefully if you're lucky enough you'll get through each of the missions remotely unscathed with the crew as unpanicked as possible and you're going to succeed and use your victory points as currency to increase your valuable ship and progress through the entire campaign and if you can do so you'll win the game it plays one to two players to being a cooperative game in which each of you control a ship and you'll basically go into a solitaire mission where you'll be rolling dice and making tough decisions as you come across enemy fleets and decide deciding whether or not you want to fight or whether you should run or if you want to encounter or not, all in the game of Type 7. Okay, let's take a look at the game down below. I'll show you what it comes with and everything you'll be building to make the game and then basic idea of how the game plays and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review for the game. So here we have Type 7 and most of what is included in the game, other than there's a few things that I don't have that you possibly will have. There's actually going to be a cargo hold, which will allow you to supply all your weaponry and other goodies, as well as some other nooks and crannies along the way. I think there's some wiring to that you can attach here and to here and to here to have all these like artillery guns be put in place. But for the most part, this is what you get. You're gonna get this big boat here. I believe there's actually another one that you could choose to get if you wanted to as well. And then you're going to be getting all these little brackets that you can attach to these guys here, which are your enemies, a ton of different types of torpedoes, as well as artillery you'll be using for your guns here. Use dice in the game, which I've included myself, so the dice will likely look like something different, as well as you're going to have your officers, ranks two and three. Basically, as you level up, you'll be able to get new torpedoes, as well as new officers and higher ranks. You're going to be getting a clear slash day and night tile, or clear and stormy slash day and night, a submerged token, which can also be flipped over to merge and then you can also choose to play dead or you can go deep and try to do a deadly dive which can potentially cost you or potentially help you you have support tokens which will let you call in air raids as well as some other hellfire attacks to support you you're gonna have fuel tokens and these little things that will let you move these little widgets up and down and then there's also damage and crew alerts these things here so as you take damage and as things happen your crew might get uh, suffer some type of detrimental problem. This boat here is mainly to be built and then it's going to be used to hose or house your, uh, your weaponry. You'll be able to choose your weaponry as you begin the game. And I have my handy dandy cheat sheet. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and look at your page right here, which is going to basically tell you what your missions are. There's a full campaign scenario that you're going to be able to go through and it tells you how to play, whether it is one or two players. I'll mainly explain the first player, the single player. But in this case, you have the maiden voyage and it'll show you 
you the overworld, much like Final Fantasy or a tactics game like that. You'll go from one to the next to the next, and you'll be rolling die to see what happens. And you'll start in the shipyard, and move to transit, and then you can go to cargo or transit or back to the shipyard, or you can go to cargo to the air cover to transit, and you can kind of move and maneuver how you will. But you always want to progress forward because forward is what's going to get you to the end, back to the end shipyard area, which is going to basically let you finish the campaign. And each campaign has its own unique benefits and rewards and needs and wants. So just be aware of that and that each area does something different. If you go to a certain area, you'll be able to gather new weaponry and like reset up your ship. And if you go to another area, you might encounter some enemies. And when you do encounter enemies, you might encounter a lot of enemies or not so many. And they might be whales or it might be something like a ghost, which is basically nothing. And they also are going to give you some sheets of paper. For instance, this is a nice little quick sheet that it gives you. It talks to you about how you will start a mission. You will choose a uh, weapons because you can choose certain weapons in your boat based on the campaign, based on the year. And then you will start in the overworld. You'll go through and you'll move, you'll spend gas, these tokens here, and you'll start with a certain amount. And one of the missions, I believe you start with 10 and you'll spend those gas to maneuver during the game, as well as to move from the overworld into certain areas. You'll roll to determine whether it's day or whether it's night, whether it's stormy or whether it's clear weather. You will roll to determine if you're going to want to encounter more enemies or less enemies. And then you will roll to see what type of enemies you fight. You might end up fighting uh, potentially nothing, even though you encountered something, or you might encounter a lot of stuff and find a lot of stuff. And then combat will take place. And you'll have this board here. This board here represents where you are and then where your enemies are. And basically it's going to be back and forth type combat. You'll choose how many of these type of weapons you want to use up in the front here. When you use weapons, they're going to have the shells remain inside the U-boat. So you'll have to actually remove them and put new ones in in order to kind of uh, get them, get the, switch them around. So you don't want to use all your weaponry all at once. Otherwise next turn, you might not actually have any of the fire on your enemies, unless you're very confident you can beat them. Certain torpedoes are going to be with a longer range. Some of them will alert your enemy, but do more damage. Others are going to be more like armor piercing. And so it really just depends on what type of enemy you fight as to what type of torpedoes you should load, which type of torpedoes you should fire and upon who, and when you should use your support. And in order to call for support, you'll need to be emerged as opposed to being submerged. And you can call upon like these guys coming down with some hellfire missiles and destroying some good some stuff you can also when you're emerged start shooting with this weapon here most of the combat and maneuvering and rolls and whatnot uh, damage and whatnot will be required with rolls and you'll be rolling per weapon you'll be firing you'll be checking skill and whatnot it will be based off of like if your enemy is over here in the three slot they move to the two slot perhaps you know it's going to be like oh they, they have a difficulty of two and then to, in order to hit them it's going to be plus two more because that's how far away they are and then maybe uh it's a clear day so no more penalties but maybe your weaponry gives you some plus one so you'll go okay it's a three plus to hit or a four plus to hit and you'll roll to try and hit you'll roll to do damage and you'll subtract based on the roll in order to do the damage to the enemies and each enemy will have the its own unique amount of damage. You'll be able to determine what they are based off of sound and sight. You'll be able to use your radio and sonar in order to determine what these enemies are and how to fight them. And then of course their reactions will be based on where they are on the board. They might be attacking you, they might actually move on the board. And to find that out, you're actually going to move these little uh, these little things up. So for instance, let me see if I can get one here, the sound up. I move up this. Okay, so there's a K. And K will determine what type of sound you can look in your glossary, what type of sound this thing specifically makes. And when you do damage to it, you'll actually be rotating this thing here. I'll see if I can rotate it for you guys. You'll rotate it. There's like three different areas in which you can rotate and they have little notches on the bottom area. It will tell you what their, uh, what their alertness is. And based on that, we'll determine how hard it is to hit them and uh, how easy it is to hit them. All, like certain things that it's going to, it determines what type of reactions they're going to have against you. And uh, each of them will also determine what type of weapons you need to use in order to hit them. It's always best to sight your enemy and figure out who they are and what they are in order to determine what's best to shoot. Sometimes you want to deal with a, something like a destroyer first before going against something else. And you'll go through combat and you'll roll dice and hopefully you'll come out unscathed. But if you don't, maybe you'll take damage to your ship. And if you take damage to your ship, then you're gonna have to check to see if your crew gets, a, you know, gets distressed. And if you get too distressed, your crew is not going to work very well. But luckily, every round, you'll also have the opportunity to try and roll to undistress your crew as the captain, which can potentially backfire for you or can help you out throughout the game. If you're able to defeat all of the enemies in combat, then you'll continue to go onto the overworld map and you'll move on and you will attempt to 
repair your ship, you're going to try and get new types of torpedoes, and you'll hopefully finish the campaign. And if you do, you'll move on to the, or the act, or whatever, the chapter, and then you'll move on to the next chapter, in which case you're going to load up again. You'll have new types of characters based on who you defeated, or how many uh, different types of victory points, and you'll be able to choose between certain types of upgrades for your ship, whether it be ignoring one damage per turn, or by one improved, by one improved periscope sight, or you can move with speed too, even in submerged state, because depending on whether you're emerged or submerged, you're going to move certain distances. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Like I said, though, as you continue, more things open up. You'll start being able to use impact torpedoes and below torpedoes. Right now, you start with electric and you start with steam at first, but there's a ton of other different types of weaponry, a ton of other different types of enemies you'll deal with. And of course, there's certain things in the game which I didn't talk about too much, which I'll come and go into my review, but you'll be able to decide to do an emerge and use your top cannons, submerge and be protected a little better than being able to be seen. And then you can also do deep dives, which can be beneficial but they take serious damage to your ship if you're not careful and do other unique tricks like playing dead as well overall it's a pretty standardized style war game with some unique little elements and of course a full-on building model kit that you see here I think you get for the idea what the what it is for the most part what you're playing and how it works with a two-player you're going to get two different ships basically you'll basically be separating your different types of resources and using them to your advantage fighting against the board as everything comes from four to zero and you have to try and deal with it as best you can or escape before it's too late. Type 7 is a classic modeler and wargamer's delight. The fact that it has a full campaign that changes as you go through it, allowing you to select different torpedoes and different types of characters that will give you benefits, as well as strategize for your next specific chapter in the campaign, all while progressing a historical narrative and being able to allow you to use unique weaponry based on the time makes it so cool. But not only that, being able to craft your U-boat or your submarine is a nice little touch as well. Of course, when it comes to it, it's going to come in a bunch of big, uh, you know, the rectangular sheets that you're going to be punching things out and formulating and choosing to fit and pick and put to put, put together, as well as you're going to probably need a little bit of wood glue, uh, but not too much. Most of this entire boat here, this entire boat here is not actually glued together, but there's certain parts where you're using these the, the enemy ships that you'll probably want to put a little glue on certain things, but for the most part, it's really, really simple how that works. The boat itself is probably intermediate style modeler. It's good for somebody like a dad with his kids to show them how to put something together, and it looks beautiful when it's done. Even if you're finished with the full campaign of the game and don't want to play anymore, you're going to have a beautiful boat that you can go ahead and set aside as a model for maybe your desk or dresser or maybe somewhere on a stand and it just looks great. I, I really, really appreciate the style and creativity of it all, especially because you actually do utilize it throughout the game. It will determine what types of weaponry you're using, and I like to put the damage on it as well as the alerts. I don't actually know if you do that or not or not supposed to, but I like to actually put the damage on the boat so I see the damage that it's taken. And I like the fact that as you utilize missiles, their casings will stay in the ship until you remove them on the next round and put new ones in, and then you can only fire the one that you didn't use or the ones that you didn't use. Very very nice touch and makes complete sense. This game comes with a lot of historical narrative attached to it and the theme shines in this game. This is one of the most thematic games I've played, especially as far as a solo game goes. And of course the two player as well, which I tried out. Personally, I like it as a solo mode game, which is kind of interesting too, because most of the time I'm more drawn to playing with multiple players. But in this case, this one works well, giving me a lot of choices. I actually, I like to have a narrator with me as he explains what I can do, what I choose to do, what I choose not to do. And so I can kind of make my choices and whatnot. And that's basically how I played my campaigns. And it was a ton of fun. Deciding certain things, I kind of regretted based on the actions I chose, and it made sense why I shouldn't have done certain actions when they were not necessary. Yes, there's luck in the game. It's a die roller game. It's going to involve like war games where you're rolling the dice, you might get the two plus, you might not. That's most of all of the combat, and that's most of all of the decision making skills is rolling dice and seeing what happens. But how you mitigate luck in this game is important. More important than I originally thought, in fact, because determining whether you should emerge or not emerge, or whether you should try and dive deep, or how you should choose to fire, makes a huge difference. I was probably about to lose when I emerged, and then I used my support token and had those planes fly across and blow up a destroyer instantly rolling. And they need like five pluses, but I still hit four out of the six rolls and 
obliterated the enemy, which was super cool, actually. I really enjoyed that aspect of the game. And it just feels so real. Like, it so feels like you're in the moment. And you're like, oh, I gotta load the torpedoes. I got three casings, Captain. And as you just defeat the character, as you defeat the ships, you gain new character upgrades. And you go through and progress throughout the missions. And you get to choose all new upgrades and cool new, like, little tricks and tips. So, overall, I really enjoyed this game. Now, with the caveat, however, that this game is going to require some who likes building this, this this stuff. It can probably get kind of confusing or a little distracting for certain people. It might take them quite a while or they might get a little messed up or they might break something and have to try and re-glue it. There is the possibility of that happening, but for the most part, if you follow the instructions, you should be pretty good. It took me a little bit to figure it out, but it wasn't too complex. Me and my wife put this together maybe about... I don't know, an hour and a half to two hours probably, which is not so bad for us considering we barely ever do this, other than with these Black Thumb Dice Towers. It's another type of uh, thing I've put together that's very similar to how this is put together as well. The fact that you have all these enemies too, and you don't know what you're going to fight because you're going to shuffle them up. There's going to be like, oh, you need these four enemies. Shuffle them up and then deal out two. And you might run into nothing. It might just be a blip on the radar. Oh, dang it, I should have check the other guy or maybe you end, actually end up with having to deal with something and you, you never know what you're dealing with throughout each combat and they change as the game progresses which is super cool as well uh like i said too there's just a ton of potential luck in the game right if you roll all sixes throughout the entire game it's very likely you're going to be doing very well and if you roll all ones throughout the entire game it's very likely you're going to be doing very very poorly but for the most part the mitigation makes up for the amount of luck that's involved in the game and the fact that you're able to mitigate so well based on the choices you make makes the game very interesting and very worthwhile i definitely see a certain group of people really enjoying this game it's something my wife would probably never want to play due to the style of dice rolling the fact that you have to be building the thing but i do know that for me personally playing throughout the campaign i had a lot of fun and a lot of my modeling friends my warhammer type friends like building the vehicles and whatnot are going to really really like this game and playing the solo mode and then at the end of it i'm not sure how much replayability it's going to have after you play throughout the full entire campaign but at the end you're still going to get this beautiful boat that you can go ahead and put up or you can go ahead and let somebody else try their go at playing Type 7 and seeing how they do. Overall, though, a very stunningly beautiful looking game. I am very excited. I want to actually go ahead and paint the bottom area white, uh, blue with the water, and I want to go ahead and paint the boat as well. So I think it'd look really nice, but I'm not super good at painting, so I'm going to try it anyway. And overall, a solid experience. Let me know what you think about Type 7. Is it something that's going to be for you? It's definitely going to be one of those niche games, though, for certain people, and why it's, or why it's not for you in the comments down below. If you want to pick it up, it's currently on Kickstarter as of today, as long as today is the day it comes out, which is the day I'm releasing this video, for about a month or so, and you can tell me whether or not you want to pick it up. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know, like I said, down below. Tell me, and if you want to pick up the game, it's in the description currently on Kickstarter. Type 7! Thank you guys so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. It does help tremendously. Make us put up more videos just like this one. And like I said, check out the game down below and let me know what you think. I'm very curious because this one is such a unique and different game that I'm used to playing, especially with the whole building aspect of it, which came as a sweet surprise, especially when I finished it because it felt so good to be able to finish it. This thing is gorgeous looking and it's pretty sturdy as well i dropped some of these these things but that's because they're actually not supposed to be they're, they're supposed to be attached so you can actually fire the missiles and remove them and whatnot but overall really really pretty as well as checking our website unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways we're releasing a giveaway right now for callie's corner we're giving away four games all to one winner and callie's gonna go ahead and decorate the box and make it all herself so if you're interested go ahead and take a look at that as well as checking out all of our other things like discord as well as our twitch and live streams every wednesday 6 30 p.m pst let us know what you think and you can play games like this one on every stream 6 30 p.m pst in fact we're playing this one next week you'll be able to see how it's played you get to try out the u-boat and see how we go throughout the campaign and that's pretty much it thank you guys for watching and as always i look forward to destroying the enemy under seas with you next time